Hey guys, how's it going? So I'm back with another video after a couple of weeks delay. The reason that's been the case is because uh, work has been busy and I am now I'm in the process of having my holidays. So I've been away for a week recently, which was great. That's why I've caught the sun a bit. So I've um, been kind of busy, but currently I'm in the process of moving and it's stressful as you know. So I thought I'd just take this opportunity as a break from that and make another video before I get busy with the rest of this move. So that's what I'm doing today. Uh, if you didn't see my previous video, I started a collection update, which I said I was gonna divide into two parts. So that's what I'm doing today. I'm completing it with part two. If you didn't see that video, go back and watch that. But basically I got 10 CDs recently. It's a real mixed bag. The previous video had a variety of genres. So does this one. So. Uh, yeah, it's equally diverse, you could say. So um, I won't go into that too much, we'll just get started. Before I do, what I put on in the background, this is Unleashed with As Yggdrasil Trembles. Unleashed are a band which need no introduction. Swedish death metal from the very early days, like uh, I think early 90s, 91, something like that. So they're known as one of the big four of Swedish death metal. Um, yeah, this band actually, Despite their fame, I only got into them a few years back. I always knew Dismember and Entombed as teen year bands, except this was a band I never got around to, but um, shame on me because it's just excellent. You're probably aware it's like melodic but heavy death metal with a Viking theme, so... Are they comparable to Amon Amarth? Maybe in a conceptual sense, except this band was obviously around a lot earlier, and it's... I think more, more aggressive, not... These days I think a lot of bands sound like a monomath, to be honest, that's just like a development of style. But anyway, um, you've really got to hear this band because they're fantastic. I only have two albums by this band. Uh, this one and... What was the other one? Sworn Allegiance. I prefer Sworn Allegiance to this one actually, but I didn't want to put that in the background because it would probably distract me too much. <laughs> so um, anyway, if you haven't heard them, check them out. That's Unleashed with As Yggdrasil Trembles. All right. So in the last video, I said I got 10 CDs. These next five are a very eclectic mix. So we'll just go straight into it without further ado. So the first band I'm going to talk about, this is a band I've known for many years. I've got just about every single album in their collection with the exception of the two that I picked up. So that band is Enthroned, and this is Prophecies of Pagan Fire. So you may have heard me talk about this band before. Enthroned are a black metal band from Belgium, which is kind of unusual in comparison to the general scenes in the world, which is partly why I think they're so different and they sound so unique. So anyway, as I said, I've been a long-term fan of this band. Over the years, I have all of their albums except for Sovereigns, which is one of the newer ones. But today I'm just going to talk about the earliest and the most recent, Ironic. so ironically. So this album was the first one they released in 1993, I think. And um, if you haven't heard Enthroned before, the way I would describe them is it's sort of fast, aggressive black metal in the vein of Marduk, but also blended with elements of 80s heavy metal like Sodom and Creator, that kind of thing. So. They do have a unique sound. It's like black metal spliced with heavy metal. But on this album, actually, this album sounds the most different of all of them. This is their earliest album. So this is when they they had more of a focus on sounding atmospheric and they were probably influ influenced by bands like Emperor, those early 90s bands, you know, because they use a lot of keyboards on this album, which uh, is a great thing. It's a very melodic album, so I really like it. The reason I didn't get this one for ages is because Someone in the tape trading days gave me a CDR and I just thought, yeah, I'll listen to that. But the sound quality was really shitty, so decided to buy this one. I'm certainly not disappointed because it's brilliant. I was familiar with the songs, but now I just have them in good sound quality. So, um, yeah, as I said, it's that enthroned style. If you've never heard this band, go and listen to them. It's unique. But this album, they're sounding a bit more ag atmospheric, I would say. Like, not symphonic exactly, but they do use a lot of keyboards and that really lifts the mood and makes it very haunting and empowering when you listen to it, so really good. Uh, let's see, I'll just show you. This one is actually a double CD because it contains a bonus CD, so some live tracks and a previous unreleased one, so I'll talk about that in a moment. 
inside, first of all, that artwork is just fantastic. And it comes with this booklet which shows pictures of the band in their early days. And it does this really cool thing actually where it talks about the history of the band and gives a detailed description and biography of each member that's been in the band from the early days anyway. So this is when the band was a trio, I think with Sabathan on vocals and bass and Cernanos, Cernanos on drums, who was the drummer who infamously committed suicide some years later. And I can't remember who the guitarist was on this one. Was it Nornagest? Don't know. Anyway, really great album. Um, it's melodic, it's atmospheric, it's aggressive, it's all of those things. And as I said, they use some keyboards some of the time to make it really sore for the heights and um, sound very majestic and atmospheric, which is just brilliant. One other unique thing about Enthroned is uh, the vocals of Sabathan. Like a lot of people describe it as like a monotone strangled cat. <laughs> like a, it's true, but there's some, some character to those vocals. Like whenever you hear his voice, you go immediately, that's Enthroned. So, those vocals are still existent on this album as they carried through with later ones. Pr pretty much the whole album is a fantastic listen. Like there are no bad songs on this. I know I always say that, but honestly that's the case with this album. Um, some of my favorite tracks, of course, I knew this one from Regia Satanas, that mini one they did a few years later, but um, Deny the Holy Book of Lies is just a classic song. Also, Under the Holocaust is one of my favorites. No, for the record, it's not about World War II. Enthroned are not a political or fascist band. Read the lyrics of that song or any of their other songs, it has nothing to do with that, so just for the record there. But uh, yeah, Under the Holocaust, that is a great song because it's just got some really atmospheric, majestic keyboards and also some melodic guitar parts and it sounds just so incredibly enchanting. And they even have that line in it, I raised my inverted cross to the Nightside Eclipse, in the Nightside Eclipse, so obviously they were fans of Emperor, as I mentioned. Um, also, Scared by Dark Winds, just some great atmospheric uh, melodies on that song. And some of my other favorites, also Rites of the Northern Full Moon, As the Millennium Black Bells, and the outro actually, which is As the Wolves Howl Again, that sounds kind of similar to sat Satyricon slash Storm. So you can definitely hear how they were influenced by the Norwegian scene on this album, and it makes sense considering the time this came out, 1993. Um, yeah, and also they have a track called Skeldenland, which sounds very Norwegian or Scandinavian. So yeah, that's evident of the fact that they're influenced by that scene. But anyway, this was the first album they ever released. A lot of people say it's their best album. For me, it's a great album, but not my favorite because as I said, I own all their other albums and they have more longevity with me. So my favorite, album is probably the one that came after this which is towards the skull throne of satan however this is a fantastic one and definitely unique because it stands out by the way since i own all of the enthroned albums i might one day do a ranking discographies after i get around to buying sovereigns but anyway this is a brilliant introduction to enthroned so you should check it out that's enthroned with prophecies of pagan fire great album okay so that was the first album by enthroned now I'm flashing forward through the chunks in my collection and going to the most recent album. This is Enthroned with Cold Black Suns. Okay, and again, it comes with one of those annoying pointless slip cases. I like it though, because it's actually got the logo, the cover doesn't. So, um, for those who aren't aware, I said uh, Sabathan has those trademark vocals, but this was the stage by which he had left the band. So. It was taken over by lead guitarist Norna Guest, who did backing vocals in a lot of the older albums, but now he's lead vocalist. So, technically, this album has no original members left anymore, because Norna Guest joined very soon after the beginning of the band. So, he's pretty much an original member, but um, the band developed a different sound, definitely. So, is that a bad thing? Not necessarily. Like, for me, it's only important that the music sounds good. So the first one that they released with Norma Guest as the vocalist, is a lead vocalist, was Tetracarsis. I own that one. It's a, an amazing album. Really good. And then Sovereigns, which I don't actually have, so I can't comment on that. But I decided to pick this one out of interest to see how they've developed. Um, so 
So I'll just show you the booklet here. You've got lyrics. And portrait of the band there. So there's Norna Gestnell with the shaved head. And various other members who have been in the band for, you know, on and off for some time. Okay. So asking for my opinion on this album, I'll be honest with you, when I first heard... It starts with a, like an obscure sounding intro, as um, a lot of albums do, black metal albums do. And then the first proper track is called Hosena Satana. And speaking honestly, when I first heard that, I thought, oh, this sucks, I can't stand it, because it's just this relentless blast beat, you know, and bellowing and growling. But I was like, yeah, but where's the melody? Where's the grip? Where's the catchiness? There was none. It just sounded like a monotonous assault. And then, after that track, I gave the rest of the album a chance and thought, wow, this is some of the most interesting black metal I've ever heard. Is that an exaggeration? No, I'm honestly saying that. So even that track, Hosana Satana, if you're listening to it with headphones or you give it a more careful listen, there are some good riffs in there, but it just seems impenetrable at first. But what you have for the rest of the album, I would describe it as really experimental, atmospheric black metal. There's a lot of clean guitars, a lot of acoustic guitars, a lot of chants, a lot of ritualistic kind of sounds, a lot of experimentation. And um, so it's not your typical black metal metal album, but that's good because a lot of albums these days, you know, like raw black metal, like uh, you can get them a dime a dozen, you know, they all sound the same and it's like that pretty much the same style. This is very different. Um, mostly slow to mid paced tracks and again, that's not a bad thing. They're just experimenting with different sounds, but it it almost sounds like a compilation of kind of rituals. And perhaps I think the band has that kind of philosophy, especially these days. They've gone more in that direction with Norma Guest as the leader. And um, yeah, it's like a, a series of atmospheric rituals with just some really interesting textured music. Uh, I'm not going to go into every little nuance of the album because I don't want to take up your whole day, but. Um, Really, if you're looking for unique and different black metal, definitely check this out. If I had to describe it, this album in one word, I would say interesting. Yeah, it really is great. And like with each listen, it grows on me. So like I said, I was that first track I heard, I thought, oh, no, not, not so much for me. But then you give the rest of the album a chance and you, I'm just left with my jaw hanging open going, wow, this is an amazing listen. So it's kind of, dabbling in like psychedelic sounds as well like um you can probably tell from my description that it's hard to fathom what this album sounds like so go and check it out for yourself but i really appreciate what they're doing because so many bands these days and there's a shitload of bands out there you can't really tell them apart but this band is doing something unique something different and they have the balls to you know experiment with something different so anyway just a great experimental atmospheric ritualistic album this is enthroned with cold black suns check it out okay so as i said i've got all the other enthroned albums but they are in my existing collection so i'll get around to them one day if anyone's interested in me doing a ranking discographies let me know i'm always happy to respond to requests so yeah all right okay so remember i said this update is eclectic that's true what have we got next? Some death metal. This is Grave with You'll Never See. As I mentioned before, bands, Swedish bands I discovered in my teens were Entombed and Dismember. In fact, Dismember being the first extreme metal band I ever heard. So they've had a long, I've had a long attachment to those bands. This band, like Unleashed, I only discovered them a few years ago. Well, I was always aware of them, but I only heard them a few years ago for the first time. I got a second-hand copy of extremely rotten live and fiendish regression in Thailand and um, they were my introduction to Grave of course revered as a classic Swedish death metal band one of the big four um, extremely rotten live that that's a pretty good album except I always find live albums are a bad introduction to a band because the sound quality isn't great and you can't really hear what's going on so well but I did like it but then I picked up fiendish regression and thought wow it's great like I'm um, just really groovy, bouncy, catchy death metal done the old school way with brutal vocals and this is the album which is considered their classic I think it's their debut um, 
and then I finally decided to just bite the bullet and get this one and was certainly not disappointed. Again, it comes in a pointless, no, well, I wouldn't say pointless, it comes in a slip case. You see here, this is, this artwork is slightly different, more clear, so I do like it. And then, then you have the cover here. This, yeah. So um, yeah, this is an album I had always heard about and I did like previous Grave albums, so I decided to check this one out. Just fantastic, I really, really like it. As I said, with Fiendish Aggression, it's the same thing, like very groove-driven, bouncy, but catchy and brutal death metal. Um, low guttural vocals, and just like, I don't know, some of these syncopations and the riffs, very catchy, like easy to tap along to, bang your head to, very catchy in general. The, the only thing I'll say, unlike, it's probably not as melodic as say Dismember, but it doesn't matter, this band is more focused on groove, I think, and I always like a good groove in extreme metal, so that's great. Um, the other thing is, I don't mean this in a bad way, but it's kind of one dimensional in terms of the songs have kind of the same pace, similar rhythms, similar riffing, but is that a bad thing? No, not if you like it, it's like, ACDC, if you like their style, you like one song, you're gonna like all of their songs and albums. It's like that with this band. So like, I never get bored personally, but if you're a person who likes a lot of diversity in an album, that's just to let you know. But um, for me, I just like to be absorbed in the, the overall feeling and flow of an album. And this one flows really well. So um, no bad tracks on this, all classic, they're great. Some of my favorites though would be Morbid Way to Die. Morbid Way to Die is a great song. Also, Obsessed, Grief, Severing Flesh, and Christine Sanity. They are my favorites, and I've named over two thirds of the album then, so oh, that speaks volumes about its appeal. There are no songs I dislike, and as I said, it's just got that constant groove and crunch which is gonna keep your head tapping, so fantastic. Um, I like this. This is another one I listen to when I go running. It just keeps me pumped up, keeps me going. What's also really cool is this includes some bonus tracks, the And Here I Die EP, so the tracks you have there, And Here I Die, I Need You, Black Dawn, Tremendous Pain, Day of Mourning, and Inhuman, all great songs, especially with that EP. The production, the sound is very different, so you're immediately taken aback, like, wow, this is striking. It's very bass driven and heavy, and it just sounds like extremely dark, so the EP is also great, so this is over an hour of just fantastic groove driven heavy dark death metal and I love it so for most people you're probably already familiar with this I was a bit late to the game but I'm glad I finally got this in the collection because it is a classic and deservedly so so that's grave with you'll never see okay now coming to the part of video where it gets a bit weird something completely different like I said, this is a diverse update. Something completely new. This is Guano Apes with Powered Like a God. So immediately, some of you, if you know what this band's like, you'll think that's very different to the other ones I've talked about. Yes, true, but I do like diversity. Oh, just showing you this. Uh, this band has been given many different tags. Like some people have described them as alternative metal, groove metal, funk metal. Or really it's a combination of those things I think, but that's different to the kind of music I normally listen to. But the reason I bought this album is for the first track called Open Your Eyes, which was their first single from this album, the most successful one they've ever done. And I just discovered this band by accident, like about 20 years ago, no longer than that, with my friends from high school. My friend had a dirt bike video by this organization called Krusty Demons, whereas he like, crazy guys on dirt bikes, like driving all over the world and doing these weird, tremendous stunts, like driving through the desert. And anyway, they always had a really good soundtrack where they chose a lot of punk and metal songs, you know, like Metallica, and Motley Crue, stuff like that. And anyway, there's this one clip of where you see crusty demons riding motorbikes through Australia and like the scenery and everything. And the background song is Open Your Eyes from this album. And I just thought, wow, I've never heard anything like this. Like it's just really, powerful, heavy, atmospheric, alternative rock. Like, 
I know you might be dubious, but honestly, go and check out that song. I really like it. I'll also leave the link in the description for the video clip from Krusty Demons. That's what got me into this band and based on that song, I bought this album. So open your eyes. Such an amazing, catchy chorus. I really like it. You'll see here, this is a, it's a female fronted band, which is funny because when I first heard Open Your Eyes, it sounds like a man basically, but the singer, her name's Sandra Nasik, Nasic. She's Croatian, and this is a German band actually. Um, she has an amazing vocal range, like she has that really husky, raspy voice where it sounds almost manly, but then she also goes into parts where it sounds really sweet and melodic, so she's a diverse singer. And then I didn't know what to expect from the rest of this album anyway. And then what I found was it was in a, fu a fusion of alternative rock, alternative metal, groove metal and funk metal, which makes for a lot of diversity and I really enjoyed it. Like, um, some people have described them as new metal, but um, it's not like Korn or Slipknot or anything like that, so don't expect that. It's not like that, but maybe some elements you can see this album came out in 1994, so it was kind of groundbreaking before all those big hitters and new metal were around. So they were an innovative band, but um, yeah, it just has like a, some soft, somber moments, some groove moments, some alternative moments. And by the way, I've always been a fan of alternative music. Like I listened to a lot in my teen years at high school, and I still do from time to time for something different. So this was a refreshing buy for me. Um, other singles from this album, apart from Open Your Eyes, are Rain. Rain is a good sort of melancholic song, except I have to be in the right mood to listen to it. Not one of my favorite um, favorites, but uh, some of my other favorites. Maria is just such a great song. Also, Lords of the Boards. That song has new metal -y aspects to it, but like the chorus is just so incredibly catchy and so are the melodies. It just gives you a lot of energy. Um, also, uh, Crossing the Deadline, very catchy chorus and great vocal melodies from Sandra. Also, on Scapegoat, yeah, there's a lot of really good songs, like um, about five or six songs from this, I just really, they give me a lot of energy and I keep find, finding myself coming back to this album to listen to. Uh, one thing it does have in common with new metal albums is that a lot of new metal albums start with very strongly and then they tend to peter off into this like boring experimental territory that happens with the last two tracks on this album I don't really like them but for the good tracks it's definitely worth it um, so to show you the booklet here yeah so a lot of people might be saying oh, I didn't expect you to listen to this but as I said I bought it based on the song open your eyes which is great and then I was pleasantly surprised with the diversity found in the rest of this. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't say it's for everyone. Like most extreme metal fans probably won't like it, but uh, if you're open-minded and you like something different, I'm always up for something different. Definitely check this out and I think you might be surprised. So that's Goano Apes with Proud Like a God. Okay, now one more CD to talk about today. You'll remember a few videos back I talked about the Vintalan box set which I bought from Temple of Darkness Records. Vintalan, Welcome My Last Chapter, just like an amazing, superb, melodic Swedish black metal album. In addition to the box set, Temple of Darkness sent me this bonus CD which I finally got around to listening to. And it's amazing. This is Necro Delirium with Apocalypse. Okay. So, just show you the disc. So, you can see here it's primarily a two person band male and female. Yeah, two, two piece band. And um, what's interesting about this band is one member's from Norway and one's from Sweden, but the album definitely has a Swedish sound. And why do I just love this? As soon as I put this on for the first listen, I thought, I'm hooked on this, it's amazing. The reason for that is, it's just fantastic, melodic Swedish black metal. So if you like bands such as Vinterland, Sacramentum, Dissection, definitely check this out, you will love it. When I first heard it, I thought, wow, it reminds me of, well, you know, not Dissection so much, but uh, Vinterland and Sacramentum, it's like a blend of those. They were, of course, influenced by Dissection. So, 
it's got the melancholy, the melancholy and melody of Vinterland, but it also has the speed of Sacramentum. You know, like Sacramentum plays that melodic style, but they're a bit faster. So, um, a real melting pot of those two bands. Both of those two bands I love. So, that's all I need to say about that. If you haven't heard those bands, like Vinterland, Welcome My Last Chapter, or any of the Sacramentum albums, go and check those out because they're amazing, like uh, cornerstones of melodic Swedish black metal. Just classics in the genre. So anyway, this band like sounds like a blend of those. So it's only four tracks, because it's an EP, I think. But um, yeah, really enjoyable listen from beginning to end. I think my favorite tracks from memory were one and two. The, the opener is a really strong one, but honestly, like just a great album overall. So think of that, a fusion of Vinterland, Sacramentum and Dissection. That's what you have, just a uh, classic melodic blackened death metal. So um, yeah, I don't know if this album has put out, so if this band, I don't know if this band has put out anything else, but I'd be curious to buy more of this because it's just really quality top-notch stuff. So that's Necro Delirium with Apocalypse. Check it out. Okay guys, and I'm gonna stop it there. So that completes my eclectic collection update. So next video you see me in, I will have moved house, I hope. <laughs> That's the plan anyway, so there'll be a new backdrop, which is cool. Uh, as always, thanks for watching this video and I appreciate it if you stuck through the whole thing. Thanks as always for supporting the channel and I hope you continue to watch my videos. Please, if you're feeling generous, leave me a like if you enjoyed the video, just to help out, that'd be great. And that's all I have to say. So um, in the meantime, take care, enjoy the rest of your week, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.